do sit down. Is there an associate in the DIFC court in Dubai, please? Yes, I am here. <coughs> Would you like to call the case on, please? Yes. Good morning and good afternoon, all. We're here today for a hearing in the matter CFI 13, 2016, before Justice Sir Richard Field. The claimants, represented by Clyde Co. LLP, Lead Counsel Sean Browning, QC, and James Lee Vetter, appearing in London, and Heather Nevin and Rhys Monaghan of Clyde Co. appearing in Dubai. The defendant is represented by Curtis. Lead counsel is Charles Baderi, appearing in Dubai, and Will Hampson, assisting in London. Now, just before we start, if I can just read out the standard preliminary statement. The sitting of the DIFC courts is taking place in Dubai, although Justice Sir Richard Field, as the judge hearing the matter, and the claimant's counsel are appearing in Dubai by means of video conferencing from the International Dispute Resolution Center in London. Any orders made in the course of or at the conclusion of the hearing will be made on Justice Sir Richard Field's instruction by the Registry in Dubai. Will both the judge and the party's representatives kindly confirm that they are fully aware that the procedure is as I have previously stated? Would you please <laughs> acknowledge that you're fully aware of uh, the procedure uh, and its implications? On behalf of my client, I acknowledge that I am fully aware. I've heard the, um, uh, the warning and accepted it. Yes. I think Mr. Baderi is probably the correct. Yes, and Mr. Baderi. Um, yes, Justice here, we are as well. Thank, thank you very much. Now, the reason I'm a little bit late is that the Chief Justice of the DIFC Court received an order from the Chief Justice of the Dubai Courts, uh, London time this morning. And uh, this has been translated by the DIFC court. And uh, I was waiting for the translation uh, before setting off from chambers to come here. And so the first thing I'm going to do, since this is a very pertinent uh, development in the proceedings, is to <coughs> give you, uh, um, two, I'll give you two copies of the translation and two copies of the original order in Arabic. Sorry, Sir Richard, if I could just uh, interrupt. I've printed copies yes. of the English version of the order. Would you like me to pass it to counsel in time? Yes, please, if you would do that. <coughs> um, do, you, do, do you have uh, the original uh, order in um, Arabic. Um, well, um, I wonder, could you either get a copy of that made? In fact, I think that would be best if you could get a copy of that made and give it to uh, counsel <coughs> in um, uh, sitting in the DIFC court. Uh, in the meantime, we'll look together at the English translation. You'll see that it comes from the, <coughs> excuse me, the acting chief justice of the Court of Cassation in the Dubai Courts, <coughs> head of the judicial body in Dubai Courts and DIFC. Sorry, um, sorry to interrupt, but there, um, since sending this version, there was one slight amendment to this English yes. translation. 
which is um, instead of being called the head of the judicial body in Dubai courts and DIFC, it should be the judicial committee. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And can, can we all make a... We'll just, just, just put, if you wouldn't mind just pausing for a moment, we'll just note that uh, amendment. We'll all write in committee instead of body. Thank you. Yes, and any other amendments? There's just one slight typo in the second line of, the, of that paragraph, which says, the lawsuits and demands related to he, the, in your version. Yes. yes. There should be no he, it just should be demands related right. to the. Those are the only Thank you very cases. much. The versions Thank that have been passed to the, the parties in the DIFC courts have been given amended versions already. Thank, Thank you. you very much. So let's track through um, the uh, amended English translation. After reviewing the petition and its attachments submitted today, and in line with the first paragraph of Article 5 in Decree Number 19 of 2016, the lawsuits and demands related to the jurisdiction dispute pending before the IFC shall be postponed considering the subject at hand and until a judicial decision is taken to select the competent court. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I propose, of course, to act on uh, that order, uh, but what is for discussion is <laughs> its precise impact on the orders as they currently uh, exist. Um, what I have in mind, but this is only my initial thoughts, uh, and uh, I would like to hear submissions from both sides, and if you need a little time, um, to consider your position, then you'll be given it. My initial thoughts are these, <clears throat> that I, I am concerned with uh, the orders I made as a justice of the um, first instance court. And the, the current orders are as follows. I have ordered the winding up of the defendant, that order stands stayed over until the conclusion of today's hearing. I have ordered the defendant to cease trading. That order at the moment is not the subject of any stay. And um, <clears throat> the order of the winding up, of course, includes the appointment of a liquidator. But, of course, that appointment um, is um, a stay. Now, <clears throat> my initial um, thoughts are these. That I will continue the stay of the winding up order until the decision has been taken as to the competent court. As to the order that the defendant should cease business, subject to submissions, I would be minded to continue that, but only if the claimant gave a cross undertaking in damages in the conventional form. The orders made by other justices of the courts of first instance, the most in, uh, relevant being the freezing injunction, <coughs> would continue. <coughs> now, having given my initial um, thoughts. Uh, I'd like to give uh, both sides a, a period of time to take those on board uh, and <laughs> to uh, formulate um, their submissions. 
it will be understood that I am going to act on this order and at the very least I am going to stay the winding up order uh, until the decision has been taken as to the competent court. Uh, the <clears throat> scope for argument is in relation to the other parts of the orders that I have made um, recently. Now, um, <laughs> let me ask um, the counsel for the claimant first. How much time would you like to consider your position and perhaps take instructions? Some, probably not very much. I suspect five or ten minutes, because obviously, I forgive my voice, I'm slightly croaky this morning. Yeah. Um, is the cross undertaking the damages? I, I can tell you my immediate reaction, subject to instructions, is yeah. I'm not going to seek to dissuade you from the course you set out. Yes. But I will need to take proper instructions as to the cross undertaking. Yes. <coughs> yes. And how much time would Council um, like in, in Dubai to consider uh, the, the, the position and to uh, be able to formulate um, submissions to be presented to the court? Uh, Your Honor, I would think about the same period of time, 10 15. About the same period of time. Well, uh, to be on the safe side, I'll say we'll stand adjourned for 15 minutes. It's now quarter past 10 London time. Uh, and I shall come back into court at um, half past ten London time, and so uh, and we'll take things from there. Thank you very much. Yes, I remember that in my heart.